That is four hertz. All right, thank you guys for joining today. We're gonna to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to show you the proper steps of what you need for a do-it-yourself test bench, AKA stereo system inside your garage, stereo system inside your house using uh, 12 volt technology, but with a AC converter, which is our power supply. The main things you're obviously going to need. One is your power supply. Um, this power supply here is on Amazon for around $60. Um, there's different types of them with different brands. Um, I don't know really if there's ones that are better or worse per se. I can't say that. Um, I'll post a link over here showing that uh, the one that I purchased that works great for me. Um, the next thing you're obviously going to need is an amplifier. I'm using this Kicker DXA250.4 I got off a friend of mine. Um, it will be in one of my vehicles as a mids and high amp, but it does have switchable um, high pass and low pass, so I can use it for to test subwoofers and to test full range or just, you know, higher frequencies. And the third thing you're obviously going to need as well is a head unit. Now, there are ways you can bypass this with an RCA to 3.5 millimeter jack and then just plug it into the uh, RCA inputs on the back of the amplifier. Now that works. Is that ideal? Meh. I like having the settings at my disposal. Plus with this I can separately run, you know, six by nines or just on the head unit power alone and then I could use an amplifier just to drive the bass, etc, etc. Now with this I don't need that since it's a four channel. I have everything at my disposal for what I'm testing and stuff that I want to test. Also need a battery supply. Um, now I've tested it before with just a power supply converter as in your AC to DC straight to an amplifier and but it doesn't work. You need you need a battery. Um, now you can use any old battery depending what kind of amplifier what kind of test you're going to be wanting to do with um, how much amperage you're going to be pulling. I just use an old car battery that was a little sluggish in the winter time on turning over um, and took it out of uh, my vehicle and now it is a test bench battery. Um, also you will need are terminals that um, if your car obviously you're going to replace your battery or if you're just starting off fresh kind of like I was. I'm going to need something to hook up my connectors over here. You can use pretty much any uh, terminal top post for this type of battery. I mean, that's pretty much on you. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link over here showing which one that I purchased that worked for me that was simple enough. Um, now, this is the subwoofer, 10 inch kicker, comp. Obviously, this is what I have hooked up to test with. Um, Obviously, I know it works, but I need to make sure that my uh, radio is putting out signal from the RCA to the amplifier, and then the amplifier is sending it to the driver. Now, I'm going to go over a few things of just how I have this ran exactly, um, and then we'll be right back. All right, just to go over a few things here, you have your negative, your positive. Don't worry about the uh, ground right here. You run these wires up into the terminal posts here. Um, you can get something a little bit more permanent if you like. Uh, you would just have to find an adapter for this. If you want to keep it just like this without having to add anything with the wires or you could splice the wires and keep this existing uh, wire. Now. Don't worry about this too much. I bought the wrong size uh, post terminal. That's why this one's a little bit higher. But the idea was I needed a top post terminal in order to hook up the cables needed. Now, if you see here, I got three wires here and two wires there. Why is that? Well, uh, if you follow this wire right here, this red doo -doo -doo, goes to the positive. Now, I suggest if um, you really want to take the hassle out of it, uh, <laughs> label these on both sides, which I did not do, but 
I kind of know what I'm doing with this stuff. As you can see, that wire goes to there. This yellow constant, this goes to the radio itself. Now, this third wire here runs along the back, comes down, comes around, and goes into the switch that I have. Don't mind the uh, electric tape, this is just temporary for uh, demo purposes only. This will be taken down shortly. I would like to make one uh, permanent somewhere in my garage, like I had before. Um, but that positive current from the battery is constantly coming to the switch right here. So how I have it wired up is this red wire here is the red wire that goes to the radio. And that is your ignition wire. So this, in a sense, is your ignition to your car. When you turn your key on, that's what turns it on. You need this constant power here in a switch. Otherwise, you're going to run into the head unit having to reset every time you turn it on and off or other situations that you just don't want to deal with. Um, this is the best way to do it. And secondly, I have the remote wire that you normally would have come out of the radio, which is your blue and white on this Alpine head unit. And this blue and white wire runs underneath here, over to here. A little bit longer than I needed, but that's fine. I try to keep it as clean as I could. And it just goes to your remote turn on as it normally would in your vehicle. The RCAs right here are your normal RCAs. This has a sub output and a front output for your left and right. This doesn't have a rear separate RCA output, but for basic radios, this this cuts the cake. This is, this is enough for what you need. So then I just have the RCAs ran back to here as it normally would. Now, if you want to run all four channels, you have to hook up all four RCAs. And then these are just the settings for that alone. And then everything else is, you know, pretty much self-explanatory. You, know, you set your gains correctly. You, you wire everything else up right. You tape everything you want. And, and you're pretty much set. And then this is just the wires that I have running to the subwoofer in the rear. All right, who wants to see this thing flex a little bit? I know it's only a kicker from Walmart, but let's see what it does. Quick note, if you guys have any uncopyrighted music, uh, upcoming artists, stuff that, you know, works for what we do, bass, mids and highs are there, good vocals, no swearing, and you're not copyrighted, or if you just like to make music on your own, shoot me a comment down below I, um, if you send me the the link or something like that where I can get the file I would be more than uh, happy to play your music for demos um, background music I have a few things myself but you know I like to help out the upcoming artists and people that like to just make music and, and all that kind of stuff so but to the music here we go as Big D says do a bump do Sorry, she was a little dusty from uh, <laughs> previous stuff. All right, let's see.
right there, man. It's really taking some power. It's pulling a lot of current. <laughs> three hertz. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, there goes that. <laughs> All right, well, that about sums everything up um, of how to build your own power supply, test bench, home stereo system from 12 volt technology in your house, which is just pretty cool. A lot of people. Um, Try to use Xbox controllers, I've heard that works, um, but that's not really that much uh, charging current, which is about, I think it's like 2 3 amps of current. Um, this one can do about 10, um, but this is nice because this is a regulated, uh, not regulated, but um, programmable power supply where I can run up to 30 volts, I can test a lot of different things rather than just 12 or 13.8 volts, which um, a lot of power supplies are. Now they are a little bit cheaper if you go with the ones that are unadjustable and they work just as fine. Uh, sometimes you can get some up to the 30 amp range to 100 amp range. Um, I know uh, Jonathan Patrick from Brand X uh, designed or repackages, sells his own power supply. Um, it's like an AC to DC converter and I think it's 100 or 120 amps of current which is pretty much what you're seeing on a stock, if not more, stock uh, alternator in your vehicle, which is pretty cool. Now those run into the 200 plus range, but for test benching um, and home power supply, test bench system, that's really cool. Then you can you can talk bigger uh, amplifiers, one, two, 3,000 watts, as long as you have the uh, battery backup to discharge it and to not put too much strain on the uh, uh, power supply itself But if you have any questions leave comments down below. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can um, Thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone watching the shows liking commenting subscribing I really appreciate it I'm striving to do videos as often as I can and I appreciate your feedback Thank you for subscribing following and thank you for everything you guys do appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time